the whole nuance about a third place is that you, they want you to build up the habit of being either at home or work or at that store. They don't want you to build up the habit of having coffee. They want you to build up the habit of interacting with that store. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Maple Ford Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode four of a five-part series with Erin. Erin, we are talking about the big brands versus the little brands. And today we're going to talk about something that I think has been messing with my head for probably the whole time that I have been in the coffee industry. And we're going to be talking about who takes better care of the customer because uh, I mean, rightfully so, people would say, I like going to my local cafe because they know my name and, you know, they, they know what's happening with my kids and et cetera, et cetera. And that would be what makes people feel like you would assume that's what better care is. On the other side of things, people who are rushing off to a busy job say, I prefer going to a Starbucks because I am in and I am out of there in their drive through and that's the best way they can take care of me. In your mind... What defines better care? Because, you, you, I mean, at Cater Sales, you guys are consultants. You help people set up cafes. Uh, like, how do you define that when a customer wants to, to bring your services into the fold? So um, I think uh, I slightly reframe the question and sure. it's really subtle, but it makes a big difference. And that's rather than who takes better care, I'd say, who meets the needs of the client better. Okay. And what that does is it shifts it from how that person feels necessarily to the, with a lot of those interactions mm -hmm. to are my needs being met? My needs could be speed. They could be um, facilities. They could be a nice environment surrounded in. Um, they could be the ability to grab some capsules for my machine at home while I'm right. out in the same place. So, like my needs could be really wide and varied. And actually, if if you're an independent business owner and you're thinking that you're taking better care of the customer just because you're giving them a personal service, then you have got a massive shortfall in your in your business because taking care of that customer is 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 not just about the personal service. It is a big part of it, and I can't. I can't deny that and I won't, I won't deny that. Um, and that is definitely where independent brands can, can capitalize, but they can't ignore the other stuff. And we, we spoke previously about that quality trap and that's where that quality trap is so dangerous because you're then neglecting that customer's need for speed or, or, you know, need to just get in and out or I've mm. got kids hanging off me and I don't really want to stand here watching you faff about with the coffee for mm. longer than needed just give it to me and get it in me because i've had two hours sleep last night and i kind of just need yeah the coffee <laughs> yeah um there's I, also in terms of looking after the customer there's also looking after the community and um in, independent brands can definitely serve the community in a much better way and uh often for people certainly in more recent generations looking after the community is is also tied very closely to looking after them as a customer they go hand in hand mm. and people want to buy into brands and environments where they feel like they're and um, they also give being back it is it's, they have a, a social responsibility and, and independent brands can do that in a more meaningful way not mm. in a better way because the big brands give huge amounts to charity and they give mm. huge amounts back into the supply chain, but they can do it in a more quantifiable way for me walking down the high street, main street, um, and picking up coffee. I can kind of understand that that shot, are they also turning their food to that homeless shelter and, um, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they meet my needs really well on mm -hmm. a community level. And they can respond to the community much quicker. Than yeah. what then they can respond to the needs of the community much quicker than what uh, a bigger brand can. So that if you know something goes wrong in the community, uh, well, let's say one of their customers gets sick, 
you know, they could run a, a fundraising drive, they could contribute some coffee to that. Whereas if a bigger brand wants to do that, the personability typically isn't there. Like a McCafe is not going to know no. who in the community is ill, whereas a local cafe will know something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, people may be surprised to, to see the conversation going that direction early on because it does the, the gut feeling of who looks after the customer better. You think about it on a real micro level of a mm. customer walks in the store, like who, where do I feel more comfortable? Um, mm. But it's the interactions that people are having on the high street with brands that they're purchasing for from are much more broadly considered now. Um, certainly by Gen Z, 100%, and yeah. to an extent by millennials. Um, so that that has to be a big driving force. I, I would also say that they, like this is a massive cop-out, <laughs> but there's kind of a place for both. They, they both oh, yeah. have quite different markets and they both take better care of the customer. Um, I agree. In terms of the customer that they're targeting. Um, the, the, the customer who wants a breadth of, of choice with um with non coffee based drinks mm -hmm. and multiple is really good at that just because they've got so many systems in place mm. that they can um effectively deliver those so uh, that might be contrary to popular belief because you you may think that an independent should be able to offer a better range or a broader range and they can sometimes but they can struggle to deliver it in a in an efficient and proper way so that's why Starbucks or Costa you can go in there and there's just every manner of ice fruit something or other mm. um, and there's just so much choice and they're changing so often that the independents would have to be so committed with all of their workforce to try and implement that and um, it's really difficult for them to keep up on that side um, but where they can cater to the customer better is things like food delivery and yeah. you know where which is kind of the elite skill of the big brands they can they can really capitalize on that and they can they can mm -hmm. take care of the customer who, who wants to go out for lunch like you know a lot of people go to coffee shops at shoulder shoulder periods of the day and um, like nine till 11 and two till four or five um but a lot of people want to go out for lunch right mm -hmm. so it if I can go somewhere where my needs will be met in terms of there's a really nice selection of food, I might slightly suffer the environment not being quite as nice because those stores don't have the budget. They're a bit to do sterile. Like a, yeah. And, you know, you say they're sterile and, and like an indie brand would say, like, clean <laughs> or, uh, or, or, yeah, or, yeah, like, yeah. or, you know, focused on the coffee. And yeah. That's where we are. Um, <laughs> But the reality of it is like no budget, no budget, uh, and 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 that you know you, uh, the Starbucks the stores you know they're they're spending yeah. three four hundred thousand pounds on fitting out stores. So of course, unless you come to Dubai, and let me tell you, people, yeah, everything in Dubai is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> everything, every cafe you walk into, is absolutely stunning and designed by the best designers. But their business models, on the other hand. No, no. I mean, we could do a whole biz, uh, a whole podcast series on that. But there's something I want to ask you about on this subject. Starbucks yeah. third place. Um, yeah. You've heard okay. about the third place, right, for Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, for those sure, who, sure. Are, who are unfamiliar, um, Starbucks decided that they were going to work on a strategy where, you know, if your home is your first place and your workplace is your second place, then their cafes were going to be your third place so that you felt a, a sense of like, this is where I can escape to and feel comfortable and, and all this kind of thing. What are your thoughts on, on the way that they take care of customers uh, in that way? Um, that has been part of my consultancy practice for quite some time mm -hmm. um, because I think fundamentally as a concept, if you can, it's not just about how you feel when you go into that place. Not It's not just about being comfortable in that place. What it's really, really about is building a habit. And if you can build habit, then you're a customer for life. Like right. you've won. And there's, you know, the tobacco industry is based on it. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, coffee's, coffee is a, a drug that's yeah. addictive and you get withdrawal from just as much as any other yeah. so 
Um, This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, available now online for you to learn at your own pace with a certificate available upon completion. Click the link in the show notes to access today for just 50 euros. The whole nuance about a third place is that you, they want you to build up the habit of being either at home or work or at that store. They don't want you to build up the habit of having coffee. They want you to build up the habit of interacting with that store. Mm. So what that means is for those business owners who I, I saw a video recently of a business owner who basically, I thought it was a parody, but he went on a bit of a rant about customers coming in and not spending enough money in the store, like, and just oh, reloading on the floor. And I thought, <laughs> oh, oh God, this <laughs> isn't great. Um, also a really well-known cop shop. Um, but I'm not going to name it for obvious reasons. No, but no. Um, people have to understand that they need to suffer the times that customers want to come in and just have a cup of coffee and read a book yep. in order to in order to have them like for life as customers because you can't pick and choose. You can't you can't say, Lee, I only want you to come in here when you're wanting to spend over yep. X amount of money because that doesn't, doesn't work what for you as a client. Yeah. You either got that relationship with the store or you haven't. And sometimes you're gonna go in and spend a low amount, but sometimes you're gonna bring your family and sometimes you're gonna purchase a load of retail produce to take home as well. And who takes better care of the customer, the independent or the big multiple? Well, in that sense of the third place, more often than not, it's the big multiple because mm. they can they can suffer those smaller price points. And to an extent, the independent can as well, but it's very rare to have a business owner with that number of shops who thinks in that way. They, they often think more about spend their head and customers coming through the door and how how much money they're making off of each of those interactions and that's kind of the wrong way of thinking of it mm. if they can approach it slightly differently and look at it from a lifetime spend perspective or a, as a as a customer acquisition and think of taking on a customer over a period of time then they would be reframing that perspective and and they'd be more aligned with the the big brand and that's often why I in, in struggle a little bit to to win customers from the big brands because there's definitely a fear from people that they'll go and pitch up in a local shop and with a laptop out and um and feel like they're going to be badgered or like you know told yeah. people to move on and stuff like that and there are things that we can do that are a bit subtle to move people on like you know oh, yeah. seats there seats that are comfortable but not too comfortable yeah you know, no no where, sockets yeah exactly like little things that can that can that can tell your customer that without telling your customer that. yeah um, you you lead me into this question that i wanted to ask you very beautifully there do you remember the mccafe campaign where they ran the ads and the, they were showing all different scenarios of where customers would come in and the barista was really imposing themselves on the way that the the client wanted to drink the coffee. So they would be like, no, 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 don't touch it yet. I'm not ready. They're sprinkling yeah, a little yeah. bit. So, do you remember this ad? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. McCafe destroyed us as an industry. Like they caned us as an industry with this one ad. And I'll include a link in the show notes to this because I think everybody in the industry should see it every couple of years because <laughs> it was it was one of those moments where what McCafe was saying is, look, we're special. We've got good coffee too. We're just not going to make you feel shit about the fact that you want to drink good coffee. We're going to give you what you want. Yeah. And, it's the, and, and the kind of end of the ads is, you know, the person then goes into – them in a cafe and they just get like a oh they, thank god I could yeah, just get a I just want a coffee, coffee. Yeah. yeah and and no fuss no no silliness around it um and as yeah we spoke about speed we spoke about uh environment etc but part of it is also that people don't want to be made to feel silly like they don't they don't want to get to the front of the queue and someone say oh we've got this single origin whatever on and we've also got this blend which is 70% Arabica and 30% Robusta and 
um, this has got notes of this, what would you like? And then the customers sit there thinking, oh my God. I just want a cappuccino with two sugars. <laughs> Yeah, and it's uncomfortable and it's like, yeah. hey, who wants that? There's, I don't know what our single seen. origin means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's um it, it is it's akin to being in a in like a really fancy restaurant and sommelier or who comes out with a wine list and this kind of like, Oh, what would you like? And you feel like, Oh my god. Uh a... red. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something with, with red. alcohol in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preferably with alcohol. I like it. Um, We've got one final episode of this series. uh, And what we're going to talk about then in what does the future hold for both of these business models? Because we're coming up to clearly some very interesting economic times. And so which of these business models are going to hold is going to be really interesting given we're, you know, a couple of years out of a pandemic and the biz- both of those business models played a different role during that uh, that time. So join us for the final episode of this series, folks. Uh, yeah, peace on peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.